Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That would help. Thank you very much. Can you do that? Everybody go ahead and find your way to a seat, but you don't have to sit in your seat. Everybody go ahead and stand up for me if you would. But find your way to your spot. Good to have everybody here this morning. We're going to start off with a song here just after we pray. I'd like to start off with a word of prayer. Thankful that you're here. Good to have some people here. Good to have some familiar faces. I haven't seen a little bit. Jason's here this morning. Good to see him. Y'all need to be praying for him that uh, uh, he could just uh, plug himself in here and get right back into being faithful to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. We can encourage him to do so. It's good to have a, a visitor here with uh, Kate, uh, some burr-headed boy named Matthew, but uh, good to have him here and uh, good to have uh, Miss Amy here this morning too. Good to see everybody here. Uh, I hope you're glad you're here and I hope you're here to have a good time in the house of the Lord today. Amen? Amen. Right, let's have a word of prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much for the opportunity we have to be in your house, Lord, to come together, Lord, to meet with each other, Lord, so that we might collectively meet with you, Lord. And I pray, God, that you would, in fact, meet with us, God. Lord, help us, Lord, to uh, be drawn closer to you today. And I pray, God, as we sing the songs, Lord, as your word is open, Lord, that you will be honored and glorified in what we do here today. And, Lord, if there's anyone here that does not know Jesus Christ as their Savior, then I pray that today, God, Today would be the day of salvation. Lord, we ask all this that we might give you the praise and the glory. And in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, the words will be on the wall for this because it's not in our red hymn book. It's in a gray hymn book that we don't have anymore. But uh, this is grace that is greater than all my sins. So we'll sing this out. You sing out with me. Uh, follow along. I'll do the best I can to follow the music, okay? But you guys stay with me, all right? Go ahead, Brother Mark.
can be seated. I'll ask for the ushers to please uh, make the offering envelopes available. While they're doing that, we're going to ask Brother Brent to come, and he's going to give our morning announcements. So let's give him our attention. Now listen, Brother Brent isn't coming up here just to go through the motions, okay? Because we always have somebody go, hey, when's this happening or when's this happening? He's going to tell you right now. Go ahead, Brother Brent. All right. I know some people think I'm just another pretty face, but I do have some things to tell you. Uh, don't forget about a prayer meeting every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Please be faithful to that. Uh, again, choir, we need you here on Wednesday nights uh, so that we can practice. People miss the choir. Amen. We have to be here to be able to practice. So please be here on Wednesday nights. Uh, those of you that are not in the choir, come join the choir. We would love to have you. Uh, so uh, please uh, be here Wednesday nights. Saturday, we have our outreach at 11 o'clock every week. We had a good day out. Uh, there's a, just a few of us, but we were able to go out and, not, and uh, uh, deliver some tracts, invite people to come into uh, God's house today. Uh, that's what God has for us to do. Amen. He has for us to stay here and proclaim his gospel. And then on January 28th, we're going to celebrate all the January birthdays. We're going to continue to do that. That's the last Sunday of the month, and that's going to be after our 6 p.m. service at night. We'll stay after and celebrate birthdays. And by the way, did you know that today is our pastor's birthday? Did you know that? Pastor, come on up. Now, we want to be very nice. I, I'm sorry. I forget that he's tender. That he, that, I am tender. Okay. No, not this one. It's this one. Oh, that one. I went like this and it hurt. Oh, so. okay. I tried to go all James Gross. All right. Bam. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's sing happy birthday to our pastor. Never grow old. Never grow old. In a land where they'll never grow old. Never grow old. As I can't lift my right me. hand. Never grow old. In a land where you'll never grow old. Thank you. Amen. Okay, payback is a you know what. <laughs> Not only am I more handsome, I'm also younger than our pastor. So uh, he's more like humble you know, too. Yes, and more humble. Uh, and then more back to a serious note: we have our spring revival with the Longs, and that's April first through the fifth. So please, please, please put that on your calendar. Uh, we always have a great time with the Longs, so please have them on your calendar for April the 1st through the 5th. Ushers, this is, if you'll come forward, we'll this receive is no the joke. offerings. I know, but it's still funny. <laughs> All right, Brother Fred, will you just lead us in prayer for the offering? Amen, amen, all right. Let's go ahead and everybody stand again. I forgot, because he wasn't out here when I was saying this, but I forgot we have another person we don't get to see all that often. We've got uh, uh, private, no, corporal, so sorry. Well, it's not Lance Corporal, though, right? It's just corporal, right? I, mean, I want to get this right, all right? It's Corporal uh, Brigadier General James Groves back there. Uh, no, it's good to have him here uh, the circumstances aren't the best, but it's good to have him here, and he's going to be home for a little bit, too, so uh, we might get to see him a couple times, so uh, good to have Brother James here with us, amen? Amen. amen? All right, now, listen, one thing that we all have in common, if we, in fact, are born again, is we all have the same Heavenly Father, amen? We don't all have the same earthly Father, but we all have the same Heavenly Father, and we can definitely say without any, any doubt uh, or, or, or any be, being able to be contradicted that he is a good Father. He is better to us than we ever deserve. So let's sing out this song. I know it's a newer one, but this is Good, Good Father. Sing out with us if you know it. If not, uh, please, it's easy to learn, and I believe you'll enjoy it. Go ahead, Brother Mark. Whisper of love. 
Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I want to drink of that. Uh, this is a new song Kelsey and I are doing, and this song has a purpose for this morning, um, and I'll explain that later in the message, but um, we've practiced a few times. I may mess up, but you guys are used to that, amen? But uh, we'll do our best. We, I, look, we just want to praise the Lord, amen? That's what we're here for. We just want to praise him. We want to uh, talk about how good he's been to us, so. Some of you may know this song. It's not a new song. It's just going to be a new song to us here at Faith. So go ahead, Brother Mark. One day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of virgin dwelt among men my example is he the word became flesh and the light shined among us his glory revealed living he loved me dying he saved me buried he carried my sins far away Rising, he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. One day they led him up Calvary's mountain. One day they Suffering anguish, despised and rejected, bearing our sins, my Redeemer is He. The hand that healed nations stretched out on a tree and took the nails for me. Living, He loved me, dying, He saved me, buried, He cared. My sins far away, rising he justified, freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. One day the grave could conceal him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door. Then he arose over death he had conquered. Now is ascended, my Lord, evermore. Death could not hold him. The grave could not keep him from rising again. Rising again. Dying, he saved me, and buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day, glorious day. trumpet will sound for his coming one day the skies with his glories will shine wonderful day my beloved one bringing my savior jesus is mine living he loved me dying he saved me buried he carried my sins far away rising he justified freely forever one 
One day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day, glorious day, oh glorious Everybody go ahead and grab your Bibles, turn to Psalms 150, Psalms 150, and if you would, and you're physically able, please stand for the reading of God's Word. <laughs> We're going to be looking at a bit, of, uh, quite a bit of Bible this morning. We're going to look at a lot of Bible this evening as well. Uh, the subject matters uh, aren't the same, but uh, just got a lot of Bible to look at. Uh, <clears throat> this morning, I want to talk to us about a particular subject, so let's read Psalms 150 here. In its entirety, praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in the firmament of his power, praise him for his mighty acts, praise him according to his excellent greatness, praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the psaltery and harp, Harp. praise him with the timbrel and dance, praise him with the stringed instruments and organs, praise him upon the loud cymbals, praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. I want to talk this morning about the subject of praise and worship. In the independent fundamental Baptist circles, there are times where praise and worship can be a scary phrase to some folk. I don't want that to be so here at Faith Baptist Church. Praise and worship are biblical. And we're going to look at this subject this morning uh, of praise and worship. So keep your Bibles handy, but let's have a word of prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, I love you. So thankful for you, Lord, thankful for what you're, uh, you, you're, you're doing in my life, what you've done in my life, God. And I know, Lord, the things that you want to do. And I pray, God, that you would uh, just bless us here today, Lord. Bless us, one, with your presence, God. Uh, Lord, I know that uh, praise is how we show our gratitude, God. And I pray, Lord, that we would truly show our gratitude today. Lord, I pray, God, you'd help us to come to a better understanding of what we are here to do, God, and what, you've, what we uh, have the privilege of doing here uh, Lord, in your house, Lord, is your people, God. And I ask all this, that I might give you the praise and the glory. And in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. You can be seated. I've been pastor now here at Faith Baptist Church for five years today. Today is my pastoral anniversary. Um, I'm excited about that because I had a whole lot of preachers tell me that after five years, uh, then maybe the church can grow, but it's going to take at least five years. Now, I had some numbskulls tell me 10 years. I don't like them very much, okay? So next week, I'm expecting for our numbers to double, amen? Okay. Uh, no, um, that's just uh, some, some things that I was told, but um, there are things that, uh, as I've walked with the Lord, as I've, as I've uh, done my best to, to stay in His Word and to seek uh, uh, truly God's counsel, um, it's good to have godly counsel. It's good that I have Pastor John Horton who came and did our winter revival that I can call. I have, it's good that I have B- uh, Brother John O'Malley that I can call and, and Brother uh, uh, George Griffiths. These men of God that I respect, that I, that I know uh, will point me always in the right direction in the, towards the Bible and towards God. Uh, but listen, all these men are, have been a great blessing to me and I know will continue to be a great blessing to me, but I do not believe things because they tell me to. I do not stand where I'm at today because uh, they or other men like them, even my pastor, Pastor Groves, uh, I don't stand where I'm at today because of what they taught me. Yes, God uses the things that they taught me, but I stand where I'm at today. I stand on the doctrine I stand on today because of things that I've learned personally in my relationship with the Lord God Almighty. Because that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to have a walk with God so that we know the next step to take. Amen? Amen. So this subject of praise and worship is something that I, I, I'll be honest with you, I've been scared to preach this message. I've wanted to preach it for a while. God's given me the green light today, and I'm scared to preach it because there's a part of me that is worried that I'm going to rub people the wrong way. That is not my intent. I love you. Okay? I love you guys. And I don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable. And I don't want anyone to feel like uh, uh, I'm pointing anything out or I'm being anything less than what God wants me to be up here. I have to do this because I believe this is what God wants. 
And listen, I'm, I'm not, I'm seriously not trying to step on anybody's toes today. I'm not, I, I want us to truly come to a better understanding of what praise and worship ought to be. Of what our privilege is as the child of God, uh, what we get to do here on earth. How many of you have ever had a bad day? Can I, can I see a hand if you've ever had a bad day? If you ain't lifting your hand, you is a liar. I got some people throwing up both hands, right? Amen. All right. Uh, uh, that, listen, we've had bad days, and I can tell you honestly and unequivocally, when I realize that I'm having a bad day, when there's a bad spirit upon me, just like Saul, when those evil spirit would come on him, and David would play on his harp, what would happen? That evil spirit would dissipate. And let me tell you something right now. If you're having a bad day and you don't know what else to do, why don't you start praising the Lord and let you, I, I promise, you won't feel so bad for very long. It's hard to remain focused on your problems when you get focused on your father. And so I want to talk today about praising the Lord, about praise and about worship. Psalms 138.1 says this, and it's a psalm of David, I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods, and that's a lowercase g if you're there, before the gods I will sing praise unto thee. Now, listen, we like to make ourselves gods, and I know you're sitting there going, oh, I don't do that, Pastor. Anytime you put yourself before God, you have made yourself a little g God. Amen. Okay? I do it too. It's okay. Feel bad? You're supposed to. All right? But we're supposed to praise, we're supposed to be able to praise God with our whole heart and praise Him before the gods. All right? We ought to be able to praise God before people. Okay, there. you See, you guys are coming along with me. That's good. Amen. That's part of praising God. We ought to be able to praise God before man. As a matter of fact, we are supposed to praise God before mankind. I will worship toward, toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. So we're supposed to praise God for who he is. And did you know he has magnified this above his very name? We ought to be praising this book. Now, this book is not the idol, but this is the Word of God. And this is something we ought to... I praise God for my Bible. I would not be where I'm at today if it wasn't for this blessed old book. You would not be where you're at today if it wasn't for the Word of God and what it has done in your life. So, the subject of praise. Let's define it. And I always use Webster's 1828 Dictionary. For the definitions of the words that I find in my Bible. As a noun, the word praise means an expression of gratitude for personal favors that have been conferred. A glorying or an extolling a particular object or reason of praise. Now, could we or could we not? Couldn't we say that God definitely has conferred some favor our way? That God has been good to us. That he is uh, someone that could be the subject of our expression and our gratitude. Amen. So praise is, as a noun is used as a noun as our expression of gratitude for the, the things that have been done for us, a glorifying God, so to speak. And then as a verb, it is to extol in words or song, to magnify, to glorify on account of perfections or excellent works. And amen, isn't God perfect and aren't his works excellent? Something to be praised, to express gratitude for personal favors, to do honor, to display the excellency of. Now, that's the, the definitions uh, uh, for the noun and the verb of the word praise. Now, let's, this other word in praise and worship. Worship, as a noun, uh, is chiefly and eminently the act of paying divine honors to the, not a, uh, the supreme being. Worship is for God and God only. Okay, come on. Now, listen now. Y'all got to get here with me, okay? If you don't believe that worship is for God and God only, we're going to have issues today, okay? So worship is for God and God only. Amen. Amen. And you'll see that in your King James Bible. It is chiefly and eminently the act of paying divine honors to the supreme being or the reverence and homage paid to him in religious exercises, such as praise, consisting in adoration, confession, prayer, thanksgiving, and the like. That's the noun. That's what worship as a noun is. And as a verb, it is to adore. To pay divine honors to, to reverence with supreme respect and veneration. That's exactly what God is due us. Amen? He is due our worship. So praise is physical. 
Do you understand that? And when we're looking at this, praise is physical. The act of praise as a noun is a physical act. And to, uh, uh, to praise is a physical act. It's something that is done physically. And it is used 192 times in the Old Testament, this word praise. And it's, in those 192 times, it has nine variations of applications. Okay? And that's what we're going to look at today. All right? Well, that's, that's a lot. Isn't it? Praise means a whole lot more than just praise. Okay, than just uh, 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 singing. It's, it means a lot. So let's look at this. And we're going to use the King James Bible to look at this. Amen? Okay, oh, well, you guys are, man. Mm. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 20, 29, you can turn in these if you want. Uh, like I said, we're going to use our Bibles. Genesis chapter 29 is the first uh, reference using praise in the Old Testament. Okay? The Bible says in Genesis chapter 29, verse 35, And she conceived again and bare a son... And she said, now will I praise the Lord. Therefore, she called his name Judah and left bearing. Now, again, this is the first reference. And it literally means this word praise in the Hebrews concordance in your Hebrew literally means to throw up one's hands and hold them up in reverence and worship. Okay. Now, I can only throw up this hand right now. All right. Because this one I have to lift gradually. Okay. Because, well, I'm old apparently. All right. So. This act of, action of praise, this act of praise, means to throw one's hands up and praise the Lord. Did you know it's okay to throw your hands up and praise the Lord? Amen? We don't do it a whole lot here. We don't. Um, there's a comedian that gives some great references to praise hands uh, named Tim Hawkins, if you ever want to YouTube that. I would try and do it, but it would not do it justice. It's hilarious, okay? Just talking about the different type of praise hands. I mean, like... Not jazz hands, okay? Praise hands. But anyways, and I digress. We are to throw our hands up and praise him. Hold them up. Not just throw them up. Praise the Lord. That's what so we don't. Praise God. All right? Come on. <laughs> God is good. Okay? That's not really praising. That's not with your whole heart, is it? No, amen. It's not. All right? Woo! Did you see that? Man, I did that. Praise God. I, did, I got my arm up there real quick like. That, that's praising God with your whole heart. Get your hands up there. Throw them up. Hold them up with reverence and with worship. Now, the Hebrew word for this particular application is yadal. Yadal. And it is used in prophecy also in Genesis chapter 49 where Judah uh, is told, Thou art he whom the brethren shall praise. Thy hand, and this is in reference to Jesus, thy hand shall be in the neck of thine enemies, and thy children's, thy father's children shall bow down before thee. So this is found in Genesis. This is the first one. This is y'all. All this is meant to throw your hands up in reverence and in worship. Okay. Second, Leviticus chapter nineteen. If you want to turn there, Leviticus chapter nineteen. We're gonna. I'm gonna go really fast here because I got a lot to cover this morning. I don't want to preach this tonight too. I want to preach this this morning. Okay. So, and we have a baby dedication. So y'all listen fast. Amen. And I'm going to talk fast whether you listen fast or not. So Leviticus 19.24, the Bible says, But the fourth, year of the, all, the fourth year, all the fruit thereof shall be holy to praise the Lord with all. Okay, and this is the, 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 the different, second application we see here. And this is a rejoicing celebration of thanksgiving for harvest. We'll let Brother Brent go handle that. He is not celebration. That is a different type of screaming out. Okay, so. This is a celebration for harvest. Now, none of us in here, is, do I have any farmers in here? All right, do I have any gardeners that, you know, like plant corn and, and stuff like that? And, okay. Uh, when you plant a seed and nothing comes up, that's sad, isn't it? Amen? But when you plant some seeds and you get like bumper crops, right? That's good, right? Well, see, this was the job of most. This is, this is the... the, the uh, um, cu currency, okay? Uh, this is something that Israel used there, there and they still are a very uh, agricultural country, okay? And so uh, for them to uh, praise with their fruits, what this is saying is this is something that you celebrate. Now, how many of you have ever celebrated? You, now, don't lie, okay? Because I'm not talking about, oh, I had really good crops this year. Listen, that's not what they're doing, Okay? And really what they're doing is they're so grateful for what God has done, they are giving everything to God. Okay? Everything. And they're celebrating. All right? Now, to celebrate, now, now, listen, I, I, just, I just know me. Okay? Now, I was talking with uh, Brother Mark and Brother uh, Fred this morning, and 
I have, I, I made a statement earlier this year about the NFL, and I've boycotted the NFL, so I didn't even know who was playing today and, and, and until they told me I didn't know. Um, but I, I remember, I mean, especially years back, uh, when I would watch the Chicago Bears play, when they scored a touchdown, I celebrated, okay? Me and my son and my brother-in-law, Mark, would literally jump up off the couch screaming and yelling and chest bump each other, oh, oh, right? We would celebrate. You know why? We were happy, okay? We were happy. And listen, God convicted me of that stuff. Not because it was wrong, but because if I'm going to do that stuff for the Chicago Bears, I best be willing to do that stuff for the Lord. Amen. I ought to be willing to celebrate for God. Celebrate for how good he is. Celebrate for the harvest. Listen, we got somebody. We got, I got to lead somebody to the Lord. Me, Miss Cherie helped. Miss Shauna helped. We got to lead somebody to the Lord yesterday. Amen? Now, I didn't, I didn't do a chest bump or anything, okay? But me and Miss Cherie fist bumped, all right? We celebrated a little bit, all right? And we ought to celebrate for the harvest. When somebody gets saved, you know the Bible says they're rejoicing in the presence of the angels when one sinner comes to save salvation. Okay? Now, there are those who say, well, the angels rejoice in heaven. No, the angels don't have a clue what grace is. They don't know. They don't. But the souls that have been praying for those that get saved, and I believe Jesus Christ himself gets up and gets a little excited. He's the one that died for us, amen? And I know I've said this before. This is, I have a weird mind, Matthew, okay? So I see Jesus Christ getting up off the throne, and if you think this is irreverent, you go ahead and think whatever you want, okay? Jesus died for me. He loves me. And I just see Jesus getting up when somebody gets saved and doing a one-man wave. You know, in heaven, getting everybody excited about somebody getting saved. Celebration. We ought to celebrate the harvest. Celebrate what God does. The third application we find in Deuteronomy chapter 10. The Bible says, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God. Him shalt thou serve, and him, and to him shalt thou cleave and swear by his name. He is thy praise, and he is thy God that hath done uh, for thee these great and terrible things which thine eyes have seen. Now, this is a laudation or a hymn. This is a little more reverent type of praise. Um, and this is the Hebrew word, teklaw. Teklaw or teklaw. I, I'm horrible with Hebrew, okay? I never took Hebrew, and I'm trying to say it the best way I can. But uh, uh, teklaw, is, uh, helaw, something like that, is what this word means. And it literally means a hymn or a laudation, okay? To, uh, to, to expound upon God's goodness. He is thy praise. And fourthly, and we're moving right along, Judges chapter 5 verse 2 says this, Praise ye the Lord for the avenging of Israel when the people willingly offered themselves. Now this is another reverent type of praise. This is to kneel and to bless God. This is to kneel and to bless God. And this is the Hebrew word barek. Okay? This means to literally get on your knees. What do we do when we do this? Anybody, what, what, what kind of action is this? Prayer. Prayer is an act of praise, isn't it? Right? And so we get on our knees, we kneel before God. Another act of humility is to kneel before the King of Kings, to kneel before God. Praise the Lord. He is our avenger. Amen. The Bible does say vengeance is mine, doesn't he? God says it's his. We like, we like, to, we like to get vengeance, don't we? Have you ever heard this phrase? Well, you say, Brother Bob, I don't get mad, I don't get even, I get ahead. Right? Have you ever heard that? You guys never heard that? Liars. I know some of y'all heard that. Some of you practice it in your lives. No, I'm just kidding. God says he will avenge us. We'll praise him. We'll pray to him. The fifth application. Now, these next three applications, these are the most predominant in the Old Testament, okay? Especially in the book of Psalms. These are the ones you're going to see the absolute most. But the first one we actually find in 1 Chronicles chapter 16. And he appointed certain of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord, and to record, and to thank, and to praise the Lord God of Israel. Now, this particular type of praise that they were to do before the ark was this. It was to clearly boast and to be clamorously foolish in the celebration of God's glory. Now, I know I don't use the word clamorously foolish, okay, all that much. But you guys know what it means to clamorously foolishly praise God? How many of you like looking stupid? Nobody's going to raise their hand, okay? Nobody likes looking stupid, all right? But you know, God expects us to be a fool for him. We talked last week about the foolishness of preaching, right? Didn't we? Yeah? God expects me to be a fool for him. He expects you to be a fool for him. How many of you have ever clamorously praised God? Clamorously, foolishly praised God. Before the Ark of the Covenant, 
I've never been around the Ark of the Covenant, but here we are in God's house with God's tabernacles. And do you know, it's hard for us to even do this, isn't it? Come on. It's hard for us to even do that first one where we just reverently raise our hand. Did you notice in Psalms 150 that we're supposed to pray? Is this still up there? Look at that in verse 4. Praise him with Timberland. What? We're Baptists. We don't dance. All right? No, we're white. We can't dance. Just kidding. We're Baptists. We don't dance. Right? And listen, I, I, I was raised in the Independent Fundamental Baptist Church. Listen, my dad ever caught me and my sisters dancing. Hmm, we got what for? Now, granted, the dancing we were doing probably wasn't the good kind of dancing. Is there a good kind of dancing? There must be. What's the Bible say? I would demonstrate, but I would not know how. All I know how to do is like the funky chicken. And maybe cabbage patch, okay? I, I don't know if those are going to glorify God, so I'm not going to do them, all right? But, I mean, you know, maybe we just sway. I'm going I'm I'm to embarrass somebody, okay? The last few weeks has been just pleasing me pink to look back and see my nephew Ian back there enjoying the worship service. And guess what he's been back there doing? He's been back there praising God. And I haven't said, Ian, you better stop that. That's dancing and that's not right. Why? Praise him with timbrel and with dance. Is that the Bible? You know what the Bible says? Amen. We ought to be willing to clamorously, foolishly praise God. Make a fool of yourself for Jesus. You know, I, 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 I've been out, I've worked in the workforce before, okay? You know, I haven't always been a pastor. You guys know that's only been five years. All right? So I've worked in the workforce before, and I've gotten good news or gotten a great devotion or just had a good song, and I've been in my workplace, and praise the Lord! I don't know. What, what was that? That's my iPad, I guess, okay? See, God wanted me to just, dun, 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 dun. praise God. Amen? Man, God's got a good way of time and stuff. All right? And just clamorously, foolishly praise God. And just make, a, make an idiot of yourself for the Lord. And listen, we're not talking about being stupid, okay? Or, 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 or doing anything that's outside of uh, using God's Word and the, and the Holy Spirit in your life to do these things. But this in Chronicles is to clearly boast and to clamorously, foolishly celebrate for God's glory. And this is the Hebrew word halal, and it is one of the most predominant uses in the Psalms. Psalms chapter 9, verse 2, and this is another use, says, I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. Now this actual one is for musicians. This says, striking fingers on strings or parts of a musical instrument to play upon for music accompanied by a voice. This is God saying, it is okay to pick up a guitar and strike the, the, the strings and sing unto me. Amen. And to use things with strings and to use things to praise Him. And this one also, this is Zalmar, and this is one of the most predominant one in the Psalms. They use this all the time. And then the last one that's the most predominant, and we've got a couple more to look at, but in Psalms chapter 50, verse 23, it says, Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me. And to him that ordered his conversation aright will I show the salvation of God. Now this is for a choir. This is a choir of extended worshiping hands, and this is a sacrifice of praise. Now, get, now let, let's put all this together, all right, these last three. Let's put these three together. Brother Brent, I do want the choir to come on Wednesday night so we can practice. Right? And don't worry, we're not going to bust out any choreography or anything, okay? But I would like for our choir to be able to be up here and praise God while they're singing. There's nothing wrong with it. We're supposed to have fun in God's house. As long as it, it is in truth and in spirit, it's okay. It's actually commanded. Amen. Is this not the Word of God? This is a choir of extended worshiping hands, a sacrifice of praise. And this is another very predominant one. Another one that we find in Psalms, another application is in verse, uh, chapter 63, verse 3. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. This is to address in a loud voice. I wish Cookie was here this morning. Because when Cookie gives, he goes, Woo! 
And some of you go, just like you just did then, just now. I don't know what that was. So we're to praise him with a loud voice. It's okay to get loud for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. This is the Hebrew word shabek. And the last one, the last application of these nine different ones we find in Daniel chapter 2 and 23. The Bible says, I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might and has made known unto me what we desired of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. And this is simply to adulate or to adore. This, is, this one goes along very closely with worship. This is, exact, this is what worship is. Praise and worship, though, go hand in hand. Praise is a physical outpouring of, his, of our appreciation for what God has done and is doing and will do in the life of, us, our, of his children. And praise is for all to see. Praise is to be seen. Praise is to be public. Praise is physical. Now, in the New Testament, praise is used five different times, and predominantly it's actually used uh, or one, two, three, four, five, six, six times, and predominantly it's actually used for the praising of men, uh, used by the Pharisees more than anything in the, in the New Testament. But the other uses are very similar to what these three uses that we have uh, in the Old Testament and this one use we have in Daniel. Um, so we see all these in the Bible for praise. And I challenge you, research these things. Don't take my word for it. Look, at, look for it yourself. Worship has the same definition now, though, every time. Every time in God's word when it's referring to God. When it's referring to a false God, it has a different Meaning, because true worship is for who? The supreme being. Amen? True worship, according to the King James Bible, is to show the believer's appreciation to God. The, the believer's adulation and adoration to God. It means, worship literally means to depress. And not, not, no, listen, not, not, woe is me. Okay, that's not, not, it's to make low, to depress, to push down. To worship is to depress to make low, to prostrate in homage to God, to be humble. And worship is our way, again, to show our appreciation, our adoration, and, and our adulation to God. Music is the main avenue for praise and a useful avenue for worship. Music's first reference in the Bible is found in 1 Samuel chapter 18. The Bible says this in verse 6, And it came to pass as they came, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines, that the women came out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing, to meet the king Saul with tabrets and with joy and with instruments of music. This is right after David's victory over Goliath. All right? That's a big day, right? I mean, come on now. We got a nine foot six giant that's threatening everybody, and a little itty bitty teenage boy takes a sling and a stone and wipes him out. Okay? David came dancing before the Lord. David danced all the time. If you look in your Old Testament, David, David was a dancer, okay? I don't, he just had rhythm, I guess. All right? I don't, this is how I see David dancing right here. Right? Get it? The sling of the stone? Come on now. That's funny. <laughs> right? Coming back, I, that's how he did. Yeah, he got him, a, got him a giant. Brother Brent's laughing. I told you, you didn't want me to demonstrate. But David... With this music, all the different instruments that were being played, <laughs> they danced as they praised God for the victory that he given. And the second reference we see is in second, First Chronicles 15. And David spake to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be singers with instruments of music, psalteries, harps, cymbals, sounding by lifting up the voice with joy. Now, do we know what joy is? Do you guys really know? Do you know what joy is? McKenna knows what joy is. All right, joy would probably put a smile on your face, wouldn't it? Amen. Can we agree on that? That joy might actually at least put a smile in your heart. Amen. Okay, so to praise with joy would mean that we're probably going to do a little more than amazing grace, how sweet. Right. Come on now. Listen, I, I love that we have hymns, and I love the music that we have here at our church, but I would love it more if you would. Amen. That's what praise is, and that's what God gives us this music for. 
This is David setting up an avenue to praise and worship God with the many psalms that he had written and would write. And then in 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verses 12 to 14, also the Levites, which were the singers, all of them of Asaph and Heman and Judithun and their sons and their brethren, being arrayed in white linen, having cymbals and psalteries and harps, stood at the east end of the altar and with them 120 priests sounding with the trumpets. Man, strike up the band, y'all, right? I mean, they got trumpets, they got guitars, they got harps, they got cymbals, they got all this going on to make... Well, a lot of noise. Beautiful orchestrated noise, but a lot of noise. To go on, it says, and it, even came, and it came even to pass, as the trumpeters and the singers were as one, to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. See, it's unified. And when they lifted up their voice, and with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of music, and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever that then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord, so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. Now, I want you to understand what's going on here, okay? This is where we can start to really see what happens when people really praise God. When they really praise God, guess what it does? God says, I think I'll go over there. God showed up here so much to this point that they couldn't minister. In Second Chronicles, or in Second Chronicles chapter six, just after we got finished reading there, this is Solomon setting up the the temple worship. In Solomon, uh, in chapter six of Second Chronicles, Solomon then preaches and talks about how wonderful God is and all that he's done. They praised him, they preached, and then they worshiped. The Bible says in 7, chapter 1, 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 1, Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord, because the glory of the Lord had filled the house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. When God is praised, people prostrate. When God is praised and God shows up, I promise if God, listen, I, God has showed up. God shows up here frequently. But I think he'd show up a whole lot more if we got serious about this practice of praise. Amen. If we got serious about this, then when the preaching got done, maybe y'all would get a little warmed up in the praising. When the preaching got done, you'd want to do something more than just sit there on your blessed assurance. Amen. And I'm not picking. Again, I'm not picking. I'm being serious here. I want this place to be so filled with God's glory that I can't even minister. I've seen these things happen. And I know it can happen here. But it's going to take a change. A change of heart and a change of mind. Back in about, I want to say around 2007, Back in about 2007, my son Matthew came to me. My son Matthew came to me and he asked me, Dad, why can't I listen to this particular, he wanted to go to a concert with his friend, to this particular group called Casting Crowns. And I immediately responded to him, we're not going to allow that stuff, that's of the devil. No, sir. And I stopped. And I remember the conversation I had with my dad back when I was a teenager. And my dad responded to me in that way. And I stopped and I said, you know what? I don't know. I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask God. And I'll tell you why. A few weeks go by. When I was praying, I was asking God, but I wasn't really earnestly seeking God's counsel on this because I had it settled in my head, period. I mean, when psalms like I can only imagine or whatever else would come on, if I heard it, then my skin would crawl and I would feel physically ill and get upset and turn it off. Or mock. Right? That's what I would do. So my son asked me this and I prayed about it and I sought God's will. <laughs> One day I was on my way out here. We just moved out here. This is around 2010. I sought God's will for a while. 
This is around 2000. We moved out here in 2010, right, Brent? So I was on my way out here on a Saturday, and, and I thought, you know what? I better just go ahead and I'm going to put some music on it and I'm going to try it. Now listen, up to that point, I listened to Southern Gospel almost exclusively. Okay? Gold City, Cathedrals, Kingsman. Okay? Old stuff like uh, uh, Blackwood Brothers, Stamp Baxter, right? You know, the Perrys, right? Good music. Some good music. Okay? But sometimes, I mean, there'd be songs that was just, you know, harmonic noise, Right? And I'll be honest with you, the first couple of songs that I put on, I put on some contemporary station that I found on my phone. I had had a smartphone, so I put on some contemporary station on my radio, and, and I'm listening. Heard some white noise. Didn't really, wasn't doing anything. Then, this song comes on. Kelsey and I sang it today. This glorious day song. Didn't know who the band was, the group was. I was listening to it, and I'm asking God to show me what's wrong with this stuff so I can tell my son why we're not going to allow it in our house. And as I'm listening to it, something started happening. It was really weird. I let my guard down, is what it was. See, that's what I told myself. I let my guard down about feeling uncomfortable, and my spirit started to be ministered to as the words. You all heard the words of the song that we sang, correct? Amen? I don't know if you were paying attention. My goodness, what a message that song had. And I'm listening to that. And about halfway through the song, I start to tear up. My spirit was being ministered to. I started to get confused. That song got over and I'm like, man, that was, that was really good. Another song comes on. A song by the name uh, of You Loved Me Anyway. Talking about how God sent His Son to die on the cross for me, a wretched sinner that didn't deserve it. And He did it anyways. He did it simply because He loved me. And I mean to tell you, I'm like, what is going on? Then the next song come on just before I got to the church. And it was a strong tower right out of Psalms. Thou art my strong tower, my defense, my fortress. And I'm listening to this. And I turn my radio off and I get into the parking lot and I'm weeping God what are you trying to say to me I don't understand this is not what I asked for God I had wrestled for years with music for years I wrestled I love country music come on now yeah love country music man I, 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 I'm an eclectic I like a lot of different stuff I liked a lot of different stuff but, I mean, I really love country music, and that was one of my hardest things to give up as a child of God. And you're like, well, you give up country music? I wanted to glorify God in my life, but the problem was this old flesh just kept going back to that stuff. Just being honest with you, this old flesh kept going back to that stuff. Not just country music. Country music was the gateway drug, okay? Then I go to something else, too. And then, and listen, it's not that that music is evil, but that music doesn't glorify God. It doesn't bring me closer to God. And isn't that what I'm supposed to be doing? Amen. I'm supposed to be drawing closer to God. Anything else is wrong for the child of God. The next morning I get up to have my devotions. And I'm going through Psalms. I go through Psalms frequently. And I'm going through Psalms. And I'm actually at Psalms 33. And I pray, I, Lord, you know my heart. God, please speak to me. Speak to my heart. Lord, you know the things I'm seeking. You know what I need to know, God. And you know that I'm confused. And God, you're not the author of confusion, so please speak to my heart. Well, I get to Psalms 33, and the Bible says this in Psalms 33. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise. And this praise is the clamorously, foolishly about praise. For praise is comely for the upright. What the Bible says. Praise the Lord with harp. And this is the musical praise. Praise the Lord with harp. Sing unto him with psaltery and the instrument of, sing, of ten strings. And then this verse is like the Holy Spirit slapped me in the head. Sing unto him a new song. Contemporary new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise. A peace of God came over me. And I know some of you are uncomfortable right now. And I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make anybody uncomfortable. I'm just telling you where God brought me from. Okay? Larry, your pastor, Larry Hoff, listens to contemporary music all the time. I listen to all kinds of gospel music. Why? Because God has given me peace about it. Because I've learned that praise ought to be a little bit more than just standing there stiff and somber. 
Nothing wrong with that. If the praise is coming from the heart, that's the important part as well. My Bible tells me there are two rules for worshiping him. Two. Are you ready? These are deep. All right? Remember when Jesus was talking to the woman at the well of Samaria? Y'all remember that story? Jesus gave us the two rules we have to have in worshiping him. One, we have to have the, the truth. Amen? This is the truth. This is where we're supposed to get our doctrine. And second, we have to have the Holy Spirit. In spirit and in truth. That's my testimony on why I'm where I'm at today. A lot of the new songs that we've done over the last year have been newer songs that are sung out in contemporary, the contemporary world. And we, we've let that word become a bad word. And I know some of you sitting there going, oh no, the church is going to go all liberal. No, we're going to be King James only. Okay? I'm going to preach the word. I'm going to preach the King James. I'm going to teach the King James. That's all we're doing. But we're going to start praising the Lord around here however we want to praise the Lord. Okay? And I'm not trying to be ornery. I'm trying to get us alive. I'm trying to get us activated. I'm trying to get us excited about what God wants to do. And if you feel uncomfortable with these things, I apologize. I do. I love you. And I want you to know that we have done everything prayerfully. We have done everything carefully. You Listen, we don't have, I'm not going to have a rock concert up here. I don't want that. I want to glorify God. All right? But I'll be honest with you. If God sent me a guitar player and a drummer tomorrow, I'd have them playing. I'm just telling you. There's drums in the Bible. I'd be okay with it. Done reverently, respectfully. Praise and worship. This is where I'm at. This is where my heart's at. This is what the Bible teaches. And I have, I have been in the discussion with great men of God that really believe the other way. That's okay. That's okay. This is what I believe my Bible teaches. Okay? Now, I know this isn't a salvation message. I know this isn't a rip-roaring, let everybody be, be convicted message. But this is what God wanted me to preach this morning. I want every head bowed and every eye closed. I'm going to ask Miss Sheree to come sing just as I am.